Ever wondered what Active Directory is? Let's start to unravel this concept. Active Directory, often abbreviated as AD, is a technology created by Microsoft. It's a directory service, yes, like a phone book, but for a network. It keeps track of all the components of a network, including users, servers, and devices, and how they're connected. But why does this matter? Well, in the bustling world of information technology, managing network resources efficiently is paramount. That's where Active Directory comes into play. It not only organizes network elements, but also controls access and security. Imagine having thousands of users and devices to manage. Without a system like Active Directory, this could be a chaotic endeavor. So, you see, Active Directory isn't just a fancy term in the IT world. It's a critical piece of the puzzle in managing and securing network resources. Now that you have a basic understanding of Active Directory, let's delve into its components starting with domain. So what exactly is a domain in the context of Active Directory, you may ask? Well, let's delve into that. Imagine a domain as a kingdom. This kingdom, or domain, is a logical group of network objects, much like a kingdom filled with subjects. These network objects can be computers, users, or even other devices, and they all share the same Active Directory database. Now why would we need such a kingdom? In the realm of networking, organization is key. This is where domains come in. They serve as a way to structure and manage the millions of objects within an Active Directory environment. Think of it as a management system, a way to keep track of all your subjects, or in this case, network objects. But it's not just about organization. Domains also establish boundaries for security and administration. They provide a security boundary for the network objects they contain, guarding them from other domains. It's like the walls of our hypothetical kingdom protecting the inhabitants from outside threats. Moreover, domains streamline the administration process. They allow for centralized management of all network objects within the domain. So, administrators can set policies, manage security settings, and perform administrative tasks across the entire domain from a single point. And to add another layer of organization, domains can be grouped into a domain tree, or even a forest, depending on the complexity of the network. These domain trees and forests allow for hierarchical organization of domains, further simplifying the management process. So, to recap, a domain in Active Directory is like a kingdom of network objects. It provides a logical structure for organization, offers a security boundary for the objects it contains, and enables centralized management of these objects. And when we have multiple domains, we can organize them into domain trees and forests for even more streamlined management. Domains are thus the cornerstone of Active Directory. Next, we explore the domain controller. Moving on, what does a domain controller do in Active Directory, you might ask? Well, it's a pivotal piece of the Active Directory puzzle. The domain controller, often abbreviated as DC, is essentially a server that responds to security authentication requests within a Windows Server domain. Think of it like a gatekeeper. It holds the keys to the kingdom, or in this case, the domain. It's the one that says, yes, you can come in, or no, you're not on the list. When a user attempts to log into the network, the domain controller is the one checking their credentials and determining whether they should be granted access. But the domain controller's role extends beyond just gatekeeping. It's also responsible for allowing host access to domain resources. This means it controls which computers, printers and other devices a user can access within the network. It's a bit like a tour guide leading users to the resources they need and keeping them away from the places they shouldn't go. The domain controller maintains a comprehensive directory of all users and their respective permissions. It's essentially a massive, constantly updated phone book that keeps track of who's who in the domain. And it's not just users, it also keeps track of all computers, printers and other devices within the network, ensuring that everything is where it should be. And let's not forget about security. The domain controller plays a crucial role in securing the domain. It does this by enforcing password policies, managing user accounts, and maintaining security groups. In essence, it's the network's head of security, constantly on the lookout for any potential threats. So, in a nutshell, the domain controller is the heart of the Active Directory. It's the one that makes sure everything runs smoothly, securely, and efficiently. It's the one that keeps everything in order, from who can access what, to how they can do it. As we have seen, the domain controller is vital in managing and securing the domain, but how are these domains and controllers organized? 
Enter the organizational unit. Next up, let's talk about organizational units in Active Directory. Now, don't be intimidated by the name. Think of organizational units or OUs as you would of folders on your computer. Just like how folders help you to keep your files organized, organizational units help to keep your Active Directory tidy. With OUs, you can create a structure within your domain that mirrors the actual structure of your organization. Each department, for instance, can have its own OU. Within these OUs, you can then place users, groups, computers, and even other OUs. Yes, OUs can hold other OUs, allowing for a hierarchical structure that's as layered as your organization requires. But organizational units are not just about keeping things neat and tidy. They also play a crucial role in delegating administrative tasks. Let's say you're the IT head at a multinational corporation. You wouldn't want to manage the IT needs of each branch yourself, would you? Of course not. With OUS, you can delegate administrative tasks to local IT teams, giving them control over their respective OUs. This delegation of control isn't just convenient, it's also a matter of security. By limiting the scope of control to specific OUs, you're reducing the potential damage that can be done if an administrator's account were to be compromised. It's a classic case of not putting all your eggs in one basket. And then there's the matter of group policies. These are settings that define what users can and cannot do on their computers. With OUs, you can apply different group policies to different parts of your organization. The sales team, for instance, might need access to certain software that the rest of the company doesn't. With OUs, you can make that happen. Organizational units thus provide a way to create a hierarchy within the domain. But how is all this secured? That's where server certificates come in. Finally, let's discuss the role of server certificates in Active Directory. These certificates are the unsung heroes of our digital world, silently securing our data and authenticating servers to ensure that we're interacting with the genuine article, not a malicious imposter. At a basic level, server certificates are digital documents that perform two key roles. First, they authenticate or verify that a server is who it claims to be. This is a bit like checking a passport at border control. Just as you wouldn't want to let an imposter into your country, you don't want to let a rogue server into your network. Second, server certificates secure data. They do this by enabling encryption, which is a process that scrambles data into a code that can only be deciphered with the correct key. This means that even if a hacker intercepts your data, they won't be able to understand it, much like intercepting a letter written in a secret code. The responsibility of issuing these server certificates falls to a trusted third party known as a certificate authority. This authority is a bit like a passport office, verifying the identity of the server before issuing a certificate. The certificate authority uses a process known as public key infrastructure or PKI to manage the issuance and validation of these certificates. Now these server certificates aren't permanent, they have a lifespan after which they expire and need to be renewed. This is to ensure that the certificate's security remains robust and that the server is still the server it claims to be. In the context of Active Directory, server certificates are vital. They ensure the security of the data traveling between the domain controller and other devices in the network. Without them, the entire Active Directory environment would be vulnerable to attacks, potentially compromising the security of the entire network. So in essence, Server certificates are digital passports for servers issued by a trusted authority that secure data and authenticate servers. Without them, we'd be stepping into a digital world full of unknown and unverified entities. Server certificates play a crucial role in ensuring the security of the Active Directory environment. So, we've covered a lot of ground today about Active Directory. We've journeyed through the intricacies of domains which act as the foundational units of structure in Active Directory. These domains provide the framework within which users, computers, and other objects exist. Then, we dove into the realm of domain controllers, the heart of the network that authenticates and authorizes all users and computers within a domain. We saw how these controllers maintain the security of the network, a critical aspect of any IT infrastructure. Our voyage took us further into organizational units, the containers within Active Directory that help in managing and organizing objects. These units simplify administrative tasks, allowing for more efficient operations. Lastly, we explored the significance of server certificates. 
These digital passports authenticate the server to the client and vice versa, ensuring secure communication. We hope this video has shed light on the complex yet fascinating world of Active Directory. Stay tuned for more tech insights.